Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Ava plots with John and Steve to free Clyde Ava brought Steve and John to her condo to enlighten them regarding Clyde's call. He said to see my child once more, I really want to break him out of jail in the following 24 hours, Ava said. Steve and John would not break Clyde out. In any case, we have no other decision, Ava grumbled. Ava contended that Tripp and Wendy's lives relied upon assisting Clyde with getting away. John asked how Clyde had called Ava, and she enlightened him regarding the telephone reserved in her work area. Somebody broke in here. That video said she was being observed, Steve noted. How does, Clyde, anticipate that you should break him out of Statesville? John inquired. Ava said that Clyde had requested her to connect with the Vitali family for help. John chuckled regretfully. It is basically impossible that that Clyde will stay true to his promise. That's what you know, right? Steve inquired. We need to attempt. Since this could be the main way we see our child once more, Ava argued. Ava cautioned Steve and John that they couldn't sit around. John let Ava know that they had been gaining ground on the video. However, nothing conclusive yet, right? Ava inquired. John gestured yes. We have no different choices. I want to break that charlatan out of Statesville today, and I really want your assistance, Ava said. Baffled, Steve shouted, damn it, Ava! For what reason did you need to get stirred up with Weston in any case? Ava advised Steve to fault her for the circumstance, however assuming he neglected to help her and Trip was killed, Steve would be the one to fault. Profound extortion? Really? Steve mumbled. Ava made sense of that she was out of choices. I realize you're frightened. I'm frightened, as well. However, we need to zero in on the things significant, and that is tracking down Trip and Wendy, Steve said. John proposed that they expected to think about different choices. Assuming we do this, we need to be holding nothing back, Steve said. I have you covered, pal, John said. With a murmur, that's what Steve noticed assuming that breaking Clyde out of jail was the best way to save Trip and Wendy, then that was what they would do. Now that we as a whole are ready, how can we go to pull this off? Ava inquired. John proposed they start with plans of the jail and decide the sort of safety framework the jail utilized. On the off chance that we had additional time, we could vanish Weston like a phantom, Steve kidded. What on the off chance that we would be able? Imagine a scenario where it's simple. John countered. Ava asked John what he had as a top priority. John made sense of that he expected to connect with sellers for gear. What can really be done? Ava inquired. We will require help from your relatives assuming we will pull this off, John said. Ava gestured yes. I'll ensure they're good to go, Ava said. In the distillery fermenter tank, Trip and Wendy awakened following an erratic evening of rest. Trip discussed a Paris breakfast. You have a few pretty delectably distinctive dreams, Wendy said. All things considered, it sure beats reality at the present time, Trip mumbled. Trip noticed that the main thing that made the experience tolerable was that Wendy was with him. Wendy said she felt the same way. As Wendy put her head on Trip's shoulder, Trip vowed to give Wendy a costly spa day. Also, what do you get? Wendy inquired. Three weeks sitting on the love seat, watching college basketball, Trip said. Wendy laughed. Baffled, Trip began to pace the room. To quiet Trip, Wendy proposed they go on a fanciful outing to Pisa. Wendy portrayed their Italian outing, and Trip cooperated. However long I have you right close to me, it doesn't make any difference where I go through the evening, Trip said. I feel the same way, Wendy said. Trip guaranteed Wendy that they would endure their difficulty. There was a commotion outside the entryway. At the point when the entryway didn't open and the sounds proceeded, Wendy contemplated whether the individual outside was somebody other than Goldman. Consider the possibility that your father or somebody can help us. Wendy said. Trip and Wendy raced to the entryway and began to shout and beat on the wall. 
There was a squeak outside. What on earth was that? Wendy said. After a second, the clicking commotion halted. Trip checked out the highest point of the tank. Wendy, the vents are shut, Trip said. How might you tell? Wendy inquired. Trip held up his hand. With tears in his eyes, Trip said, I feel no air development. We're fixed in. Wendy began to have a fit of anxiety. Trip guaranteed Wendy that they had time left. How long? Wendy inquired. Trip said he didn't have the foggiest idea. We will be all right, Trip guaranteed. Trip urged Wendy to remain even headed. Calm? What we need to do is get the damnation out of here. We will pass on, Wendy said. Trip maneuvered Wendy into an embrace to comfort her. In the Demera parlor, Stefan was pouring a beverage when a shower robe clad EJ strolled into the room. For what reason did you call me so late? EJ inquired. Stefan asked EJ for help. You must be joking. Disregard it. Anything you've done now, fail to remember it, EJ said. Stefan argued that EJ was the main family that he had left. EJ countered that Stefan was a bug that would continuously look for inconvenience. I attempted to stay away from the dull way, I did. In any case, things gained out of influence, and EJ, I want your assistance, Stefan said. For sure. Gabby could experience one more broken leg? EJ countered. Stefan murmured. I really want your assistance, or it's the best end for me, Stefan said. E.J's grin fell away, and he asked what Stefan implied. Stefan admitted to E.J. that he had shot Harris on Clyde's requests. What on earth would you say you were thinking? E.J. inquired. You understood what position I was in. I had no way out, Stefan snarled. E.J. contended that there was generally a decision. At the point when Stefan made sense of that Gabby would have endured the side effects assuming he had denied Clyde's structure, E.J. feigned exacerbation. Gabby, Gabby, who brings just a burden and hopelessness into our lives. However you stick to that lady. How in the world did it work out like this? E.J. inquired. Stefan made sense of that the circumstance had become desperate since Harris was alive. How could that be more regrettable? E.J. inquired. Since I didn't follow through with the task. Furthermore, therefore, on the grounds that I fizzled, presently Clyde is coming for me. Stefan said. EJ laughed. I'm having serious questions that our genetic supply really covers, EJ kidded. Stefan apologized for how he had helped Clyde, and he informed EJ that Harris realized he was the shooter. Harris, believes me should assist him with taking Clyde out, Stefan said. That's what Stefan contended assuming he helped the police, Clyde would have him killed. That sounds like a you issue, EJ said. Show some care, okay? For once. Stefan hollered. EJ gave Stefan an admonition look. I came to you since this thing has turned such a long ways wild and on the grounds that you are my sibling, and I thought perhaps, quite possibly, you would have an ounce of compassion for me. Also, assuming that you had helped me out the initial occasion when I came to you, Stefan said. EJ countered that he wouldn't allow Stefan to fault him. I'm doing whatever it takes not to fault you for anything, I'm basically expressing that with your assistance, this present circumstance could never have gained out of influence. In any case, moronically, I pulled that trigger, and this thing started to unwind. Also, presently, I'm out of choices. This is life and passing. I have no one remaining. That is to say, what in blazes am I expected to do? Stefan inquired. EJ exhorted Stefan to avoid anything. I will call the police, EJ said. EJ encouraged Stefan to hand himself over.